Making a steam plant using three Cotswold Heritage steam engines. Part 7. Assembling and finishing the condenser and water tank assembly, starting with a thorough clean of all the metal parts. Since the last episode, I've added this. It's a bush to allow me to fit a drain tap to drain the condensate at the end of a run. Now that the brass and copper parts are very clean, I can solder them together. Whenever you solder parts together, whether it be silver soldering or soft soldering, absolute cleanliness of the parts is vital, and it's also quite important to use this stuff. This is flux soldering paste. It's the kind of stuff you buy from a DIY store, and once this is applied to the work and heated up, it cleans the metal. I'm applying plenty of this because I do not want any areas where there isn't any flux. I'm going to use plumber's solder to solder these components onto this metal plate. And unlike electrical solder, plumber's solder does not contain any flux built in. I can't really show much of the soldering process because it all takes place down inside the tubes, and I really don't want to melt my new camera. The good thing is, because these are going to be painted, it doesn't matter if I get some solder on the brass base. If I was going to polish up this base, like on some condensers that I make, then I'd have to be very careful. But in this case, it really is not important because I'll be sanding off most of the solder that's on the base as I key it for the paint. You will notice that in this clip, I'm using the paintbrush a lot because I need to remove the excess solder from around the base of the tubes. I just dip the brush in some water and brush away the excess solder. While the condenser and water tank assembly is cooling, I think I'll make the ring for the top of the chimney. And for this, I'm using a scrap piece of brass that I found in the drawer. I've no idea where this part came from in the first place, but it's ideal for making the chimney top cap. I'm shaping this part completely manually by winding the two handles on the top slide at the same time. And now, as always, it's time to use the centre drill to make a hole in the centre of the work. The next part of the job is to drill a hole all the way through the piece. And luckily, this is like a cap, so I don't have to drill very far, as you can see. This is a couple of drill sizes under the one inch that I require. In this clip, I'm comparing it with the original chimney from the boiler. And now I'm using a file in the lathe to shape the ring. Time for a couple of health and safety warnings. The first one is, when using a file in the lathe, make sure it has a handle. This is very important. And you will notice if you look closely at this clip, I'm always putting a bias on the file away from the chuck. So if it slips, it comes towards me and not towards the chuck. It's common sense, really. Now I'm using a piece of folded emery cloth to remove the scratches that are left by the file. And once again, I fold the emery cloth many times and you will notice that I never put my fingers on the work itself. Similarly, with this long piece of wet dry sandpaper, my fingers are miles away from the work. And I'm pleased to announce that I still have at least five of my fingers left after all these years of doing jobs like this. Once I stop the lathe, I can feel now that this part is quite smooth. It's time to start the boring process, and yes, it is fairly boring if you do it a lot. What I'm doing is boring the hole to exactly the right size so I can push in this piece of copper. The idea is to take a very small amount of metal from the inside of the tube and then frequently check the fit using the copper chimney. It's miles off yet, I'm just being a bit pedantic just so I can make a video about it. I'm taking a very small amount off each time. I want the ring to be a very tight push fit on the copper so I don't have to silver solder it in place. If I was going to silver solder it in place, I'd need it to be a slack fit so that the silver solder could penetrate the joint. But this one is a push fit, and when I finally get it to the right size, I use the tailstock to push the piece of copper tubing into the brass fitting, after which I part off the entire assembly. Sometimes I've seen people do this, holding the part with the hand because eventually it's going to stop spinning, but I never do that. Instead, I'm using a piece of brass hexagon in the end of the tube so that when it parts off, I can just lift it out of the way. With the parted off chimney clamped in the chuck of my Smart and Brown lathe, which is a good bit bigger than the Boxford, I'm facing off the part where the top edge of the copper meets the brass ring. I couldn't really do this on the Boxford because the hole in the spindle is too small. And now it's clean up time. The component that I soldered earlier has cooled, and so it's on the bench and it's time to give it a really good scouring 
First of all, with emery cloth, I need to scratch the brass as much as possible. But then once I've scratched the brass as much as possible, I need to smooth out some of the scratches and make finer scratches using Scotch-Brite. And just in case you've never seen any of my other videos, Scotch-Brite is an abrasive pad, a bit like a scouring pad, but a bit more vicious. I'll put the spelling on screen so you can get some for yourself. I use this stuff very frequently in my workshop for cleaning up metal parts as you see here and also getting a good finish on machine parts. But don't just take my word for it, try it for yourself. This clip shows the chimney and I've polished up the brass ring on my polishing spindle. But the polishing spindle has also polished up part of the copper and I don't want this to be polished, it needs to be keyed for the paint. So once again I'm using the Scotch Brite to do this. I want the chimney to be at the same height as the one on the boiler. By using two steel rules like this, one across the top of the chimney and one placed vertically, this tells me that this boiler is one foot tall from the baseboard. And when I measure the height of the chimney on the condenser, it's one and a half inches higher than the one on the boiler. So I cut it off on the bandsaw, cleaned it up in the lathe, and now it's the same height as the boiler. In this clip, I've temporarily fitted a valve into the bush at the back of the condenser tank. It's a little bit on the large side, but it needs to be in order to drain the condensate in a reasonable time. And it's almost painting time. But first, I'm going to mask off the brass cap. But I need to make sure that none of the masking tape is on the copper part. So I'm using the edge of a ruler to just make sure this is the case. And that's almost it for this episode. All the parts are ready for painting. Not the top cap, so they're just sat on the bench for effect. I found a lump of scrap brass in my scrap bin which supports the chimney and I'm spraying the parts using some etch primer. The etch primer I'm using is Precision Paints etch primer. I really do like this stuff and best of all it works. Provided you follow the instructions you must be able to see the metal through the paint and if you look carefully you can see the metal through the paint. This means that the etch primer gets plenty of oxygen to do its job. Or at least I assume that's what the reason is. And the instruction leaflet that comes with this etch primer tells me to wait 24 hours before overcoating. So I'm waiting 24 hours. That's it for this episode. I'll just leave you with this shot of the paint drying. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.